The last thing we'll talk about with operators uh, from chapter four is looking at commutation. Uh, so in chapter three, when, in uh, even earlier, uh, chapter three, we introduced operators. I said that the order of operation for operators matters, right? So that if you take A and B uh, operating on F of X, um, whether you do B first or A first matters, right? You won't necessarily get the same thing. Uh, and operators don't necessarily commute. Uh, and whether operators commute or not actually tells us something about the physical properties of those operators. Um, that's what we're going to talk about here. Uh, so first we have to do some, some, uh, uh, some definitions and notation uh, here. So operators don't necessarily commute. It's not that they never commute, but they don't always commute. Um, so one way we can look at this is we define this um, this notation here. This is also known as a commutator. And this tells us if we take our two operators and look at them in different directions, right? If in doing them in different order, um, what's the difference between those two? Uh, and so if operators commute, then this commutator, by definition, is equal to zero, right? And so that's it. Doesn't matter which way you do it; those will they'll cancel out. Let's look at uh, some, a couple of examples. We'll look at first one where uh, where they do commute and show that they commute. So uh, let's look at the kinetic energy operator. This is in the table in the textbook, uh, and we looked at this in the last chapter. Negative h bar squared over two m second derivative with respect to x. And we'll look at this in one dimension. All right, so this is part of the, the Hamiltonian operator. And we'll look at the momentum operator, px, which is negative i h bar first derivative with respect to x. All right, so let's look at the commutator between these. All right, if we take, take these in either order. So that's going to be kx px and to look at this, we need to have some generic function uh, f of x in here, uh, since we have, say, derivatives and things like that, minus uh, px kx, right, looking at them in either order. So let's do them one by one, kx px operating on some function f of x. Okay, so we'll get negative, well, we'll do them in order. So we'll get kx operating on negative i h bar of derivative of f of x respect to x and then we'll do the next uh, operation after that negative h bar squared over 2m um, times negative i h bar and we'll end up with a third derivative of f of x dx okay and let's look at doing this in the opposite order so because we have the second, so the kx, we end up with the third derivative because we have the second derivative of this function. There's no x's in the in between, right? If we look in here, there's no x values. So, so we can just pull out all those constants. If we do px, then kx, what we'll have is px times negative h bar squared over 2m second derivative of f of x with respect to x um, and then we'll get negative i h bar and again we have no x's here in this part and so we'll negative i h bar times negative h bar squared over 2m and we'll again have this third derivative oh, i'm missing a three there so these two are the same so these two are equivalent, which means that overall our commutator is equal to zero. So these these are this is an example of operators that do commute. It doesn't matter the order you do them, you get the same result either way. Now we'll look at the opposite example. So an example of operators that do not commute are the position and momentum operator. So if we have x and p of x, this commutator is not equal to zero. Well, let's find out what it is. 
Okay, so we'll first look at x, p of x on a function. All right, so we'll get x operator times negative i h bar, first derivative of x, of x with respect to x. All right, and then we'll get negative i h bar, we'll just get x multiplying by this derivative. Okay, and if we do the opposite, do the momentum second, derivative first. All right, so we'll have the momentum operator times x times f of x. And we'll still get negative i h bar. And now we have the derivative, I'll write this out explicitly, the derivative of this whole thing, x times f of x. All right, so this is going to give us a little bit something extra. So we'll get negative i h bar. Uh, and now we need to use the, the product rule. So we'll get uh, negative i h bar times, so the derivative of x times f of x is we will get um, f of x plus uh, x times the first derivative of x with respect to x. Right, so that's just using the product rule here. Okay. So if we multiply that out, we'll get negative i h bar times f of x plus negative i h bar x df of x dx. So now if we go back to our commutator, x p x, we, what we want to do is take the difference of these two. All right, so the first one we have negative i h bar x df dx and then minus this whole thing here, negative i h bar f of x um, plus negative i h bar x df dx. And so we'll get uh, terms that cancel here. And so overall, we're just left with positive i h bar f of x. And so uh, when we write out these commutators, we kind of leave off the f of x here. And so we would say that this commutator is equal to i h bar. All right. And so in the next video, we'll talk about why this matters.